All right, welcome back to 83 Till Infinity. This is El Mandolero. That's what this is called. That's what it is. El Mandolero, our uh, Star Wars colon The Mandalorian podcast. Uh, not to be confused with that other show on television. Uh, today we're going to be talking episodes four and five. Uh, episode four was titled The Siege. Episode five was The Jedi. Episode four directed by... The Venerable Carl Weathers, Mr. Stu himself, and written by John Favreau. And uh, episode five was directed and written by the chosen one, Dave Filoni. Okay. Carl Weathers directed The Siege? Yeah. Yep, that's correct, yeah. I actually double-checked wow. because I thought that um, was maybe not correct. <laughs> I know. I, I, just, I didn't know he ever... And, and not only did he direct, I mean... It was good. Yeah, like, that yeah. was a good. It was a well directed episode. Absolutely. How do you direct I, something while you're in it? That's some Spike Lee stuff. <laughs> I I don't that know. Hard. Like, I mean, he must not direct the shots that he's in. Obviously, right? It would be awesome if he just yeah. watched them back. All right, guys, let me let me see what I did. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I hope he wouldn't, because then he could be like, oh, if I. If you would let Carl Weathers do it, that kid in the jeans wouldn't have been in the background. <laughs> right. We I was have... in that scene. I couldn't check. Mm -hmm. We probably should briefly talk about the fact that he directed Jeans Guy, which is, I think, the official name of the guy. Yeah. He's got a Star Wars wiki ev entry and everything, Jeans Guy. Uh, not anymore. He's been digitally removed. I saw that he has been removed from the canon. That, which is, I feel yeah, like sad the, for Jeans Guy. the rip, the version of the rip with Jeans Guy is going to be... <laughs> priceless <laughs> I, th I, I think everybody liked the jeans guy thing i i i would have like i would have let hasbro make a toy i would have like there i would have had everything about jeans guy i, I don't know yeah. I, it was a fun thing the fandom was into it nobody was yeah. angry about jeans guy honestly I, I i hope that they like when this eventually gets released to blu-ray or whatever that the first pressing they keep the jeans guy version in on purpose just so those yeah. are collector's yeah. items yeah. in 50 years. I, would, yeah. I love it. I, I, I've got to believe that John Favreau really does not like Jane's guy. <laughs> like if, we, if we're picking who doesn't like yeah. it, Mr. Favreau, I don't think is the kind of guy that thinks it was funny. Yeah. I, I, I think he's the kind of guy that probably after he read Twitter, sat down, poured himself a drink and like just looked at the wall for an hour. I could like, see him firing somebody. <laughs> who's getting fired <laughs> i i guarantee that somebody maybe somebody even responsible mm -hmm. i somebody got fired for that yeah but maybe uh, jeans guy got fired oh wouldn't that be awful oh, yeah. the, the poor pa actually he's not a pa he was, uh, was apparently a sound guy i think is mm -hmm. what twitter told me i don't know if any of that's true but not anymore he's not no, he's, <laughs> he's a barista he's lucky. i was gonna say so he's promoted to director <laughs> lucky is, christian is bale wasn't around yeah He's working at <laughs> amateur. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I forgot about that. No, I'll uh, never forget fine. about that. It was fantastic. That's a, that's a good. That's a good old internet joke because man, that was a long time ago. That was like the yeah. most popular video on YouTube for a while. Yeah, that's there a are kids. There are kids watching the internet right now who did who weren't alive when that happened. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. There's yeah. there's kids that are making millions of dollars on YouTube right now that were not alive yeah. when that yeah. video was posted. I, I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> there are kids like imagine imagine being a kid who's like in his early 20s and you're making i'm calling people in their early 20s kids right um and you're making millions of dollars doing something that you know we're doing in the evening as a hobby um although i mean they're doing more of it and they're probably doing it better um <laughs> but still it's pretty fun right compared to my actual job mm -hmm. right. um it's pretty fun don't go to law school kids yeah it's a bad it's a bad choice run make <laughs> better decisions run for I, the internet. I do think I do think that could be like this, the like the subtext or the sorry, the subtitle for our show. It could be like eighty three infinity colon. <laughs> don't go to law school. Don't go to law school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could put it on law. What is it? Lawstudents.ca. Yeah. That's the, that yeah. that troll. Toplawschools dot com. Yeah, that exactly. Post yeah. it to there. We get them as a sponsor. <laughs> What's top? Is is toplawschools.com like a thing? Is that a... yeah, yeah, yeah? It's uh, yeah, it's just this law students, garbage hole. Lawstudents.ca is the uh, yes. Canadian version of TLS. TLS yeah. is where... what do they? 
where you go where yeah, you what do they do on well, they talk about how they're born and bred for success and achievement <laughs> you know what if anybody <laughs> if anybody from tls watches this maybe this maybe that's a dated reference yeah. even for them now but but back then I know. that was the uh the tagline <laughs> yep it, it was a fantastic place now also the the advice the the response to every question on tls was uh uh, what is it? H Y S or don't go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's similar to any social forum. Like if you go to r slash relationships, the there's only one advice, oh, yeah. which is absolutely red flag break up with them. If you go to r slash Pokemon, you know, just it's always the same, the same advice oh, in yeah. every forum you go to. Okay. Um episode recap uh let's do let's let's since the the siege was two weeks ago now i guess let's uh see if we can the three of us together give a decent recap of the episode so i remember in the beginning uh ship is you know crap beat to crap so he needs to go meet his friends to get some repairs done or something like that yep yeah uh and then it turns out there's a base mm -hmm. on uh, where, uh, as we learn, there is genetic experiments happening, and uh, Carl Weathers yells at uh, a few people. <laughs> yeah, they yells at people to drive the car, yells at them mm -hmm. to get out of the car, get in the and elevator. Yeah, <laughs> Carl Weathers does yell a lot in this episode. Yeah. But I like I like when Carl yell Weathers yells. Mm -hmm. It's fun. He does a good. He's a good. He's a good person at yelling. Yeah. He's good at yelling. Yeah. Um. And apparently directing. Yeah. And then so maybe he couldn't step out of that director's chair. And that's why he kept yelling. Yeah. Maybe he's toxic to work. With. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's and it just it carries through in his in his performance as well. Uh, yeah. So as far as recap goes, uh, secret base, uh, they blow up secret base. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Mandalorian goes back to the lead from a couple weeks ago, which is to go to Corvus. Yeah. And there's a spy. There's a spy or, or some sort of plant from the Empire who I guess has been told if uh, the Razor Crest, Razor Crest? Yeah. Comes yep. in for repairs, put a some sort of tracking beacon on the ship. Uh, so <laughs> so spy dude does that and then calls back to his, uh, his I don't know, connect in the handler? Empire. Yeah, his handler. And tells him that, you know, the, the, the tracker's been planted. Uh, she walks down a bunch of hallways and eventually opens up a door and Moff Gideon is in there with a bunch of dark troopers, the uh, the android or the, the robot kind, and uh, right. tells him that they're tracking the Razor Crest and Moff Gideon's like, does he still have the child or something like that? And she says yes. And then, you know, Moff Gideon strokes his, his evil cat and then, you know, tents his fingers together and <laughs> gives an evil bad guy laugh. Um, so he's he's on his way. Then uh, in episode five, the Jedi, uh, that one we get the cameo from Ahsoka Tano, uh, played by. I already talked about who that was directed by. Yeah, yeah, it's both Dave Filoni. Um, so we get Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano. Uh, she's on a planet. Was it Corvus? Corvus. Corvus. Yeah, I think Corvus. Yeah. She's in the woods. She's uh, <laughs> killing a bunch of guards. Uh, and then eventually some woman who seems to be in charge of a town that she's assaulting, uh, threatens to murder some uh, apparently innocent man. And Ahsoka Tano says, let the people in the town go by tomorrow. I'm going to murder you, I guess. And then disappears back into the woods. Uh, and then our hero lands on the planet and enters the town and eventually is offered, offered, uh, a bounty, I guess he's the option to take a bounty on the Jedi's head, um, which he appears to take or pretends to take, and then goes into the woods and briefly fights with Ahsoka Tano. Don't remember how that ends. Or, or I remember that he doesn't, they don't kill each other, but I don't know why they stop fighting. Uh, well, he says Ahsoka to her. Oh, yeah. Like, and he's, he does parry her with his Van Braces. Yeah. Van Bracers. Right. So he says, uh, he says her name. She's like, how do you know my name? You know, I was sent by Bo-Katan, yep. I assume. Uh, here, look at this little 
cute little guy I got here. He's a Jedi like you. Can you take him? And she's like, <laughs> let me talk to him with my mind. Uh, yep. Baby Yoda. Uh, we find out his name is Grogu. What do you guys think of the name Grogu? I really like it. I don't know. My, it sounds, I think it seems consistent with that species. Yeah. Sounds like sure. an alien's name from Yoda's two planet. references. Yeah. We have Yoda and... Uh, oh man, comments Yado, are gonna Yado, kill me now. Yado, 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 yeah, Yado, Yado, yeah. yeah. So seems Comment consistent. Yeah. I mean, comments are gonna. I'm dead. Now. You think, <laughs> do you think Yoda hooked up with her? No, I do. I do not. But no, I, I mean, I know you don't I have... like. I know you don't like uh, romances and sci-fi. <laughs> but I mean, um, you just gotta wonder. Like now that we know how scarce this um this species is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, like like even like Ahsoka Tano's like I've only ever seen one of these before. Um, and his name was Yoda. They don't even know. Like they don't even have a name for the species. Yeah. Right. Because they're so rare. Like yep. he wondered, does does Grogu even know what he is? Does Yoda even know where he's from? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Great question. So you got to think that Yoda looks at the the female um, of his species of the Jedi Council and is just like, mm. I right? mean, maybe he has a Mush, maybe he has a duty to repopulate the species. Yeah, right. Like maybe he sees it as his sovereign yeah. duty to to like fill the universe full of these little gremlins. <laughs> right, and and I feel like. This might be too far in aside for um, uh, for our recap, but uh, cloning does exist and it seems to be very easy in this universe. Mm. Um, so I, I, which does reduce the stakes on Frog Lady, but I guess she, she probably doesn't have access to cloning if we're being honest. Mm. But um, I think in Yoda's case uh, of the people to be cloned, uh, have clones of, I think uh, Yoda's probably pretty up there. Mm. Not as much fun it is. I agree. <laughs> I agree that the like. Can you can you stay behind? I got I got something to mention. It's je, it's official Jedi business yeah. though. Frank Frank Oz filmed the scene. George yeah, Lucas wouldn't let him put it in the cut. <laughs> yeah, He's right. like, look, I got both puppets. Frank, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I definitely see Frank Oz doing both parts himself for sure for hours, just hours trying. I to want, get her and I want her right. voice to be more like Miss Piggy. Like you know, Yoda's kind of like Miss Piggy, mm. but like the other one is full on Miss Piggy. Oh goodness! <laughs> it just back back itself. to the recap. <laughs> <laughs> um, she tells, I guess, Grogu's story. He, you know, he was mm -hmm. trained at the Jedi Temple, and uh, I guess he survived. Well, no, I guess he survived Order sixty six somehow. Maybe he's a plant. Maybe he's a maybe he's a turncoat, but we don't know. So he he hit his Force abilities, and he wandered from place to place, and eventually got captured by the Empire. And then they were doing experiments on him, which we saw some of. Um, and he hasn't used the force for a long time. Uh, then he, she wants to test him. She gets a stone. She asks him to use the force to send it back to her. He does nothing. Mando tries and he does it. And she's like, uh Oh, he's got attachments. I'm not going to train him because, uh, right. I've been there and done that. And <laughs> I'm not trying to go through this twice. Twice. Uh, this kid's the, he's, he's got attachments now. I'm not going to train him. Uh, they actually retconned something, which I, I'm sure is was done on purpose. As she says that, you know, if he doesn't get trained, then his force powers will, uh, you know, oh, wither right. away. Which is, yeah. which is, yeah. which is, I mean, I suppose. Uh, I, I was actually a big wreck. That's a big retcon. Yeah. I, thought big the, retcon. I thought the yeah. whole point of the, of the Jedi getting the kids early was that, you know, they just like they they'd become like like I don't know like more like dark side ish mm -hmm. because they just kind of let their emotions rule them and then their their powers might not get used for good or yeah. whatever, right? And I mean, we um, we also have um, a full of three recent movies of including a, a force sensitive person who was never trained <laughs> and her powers just came out of nowhere. You know, she just got big yeah, on day one. Yeah. It's like what that morning she couldn't use the force. <laughs> By the next night, she was beating like the most powerful, yeah. the, the only other like most you know like like Jedi that's really out there, right? Kylo Ren, and she's just like, mm, I'm gonna beat you. Yeah. I didn't know I could do this yesterday. <laughs> it's not like Grogu, where you know, like Grogu clearly has. It's, he's exhibiting all this. I mean, he was training the Jedi Temple, I guess, but he can do all this stuff. Yeah. And I mean, he lit. He could lift the. Uh, what was the big Rhino thing? Oh yeah. Um... Uh, it's their sigil now. Yep, we're, we're gonna uh, get killed for this one too. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, he lifted a rhino. Was it a rhino? Uh, 
uh, Snarg Blaster. <laughs> oh man, that's you're making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's something horn. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, no, it, it, it is actually mud something horn. horn. I, I mean, I, we started with mud horn. horn. I think it's at least <laughs> it's at least seventy percent correct. Kill, I like kill death horn. horn. <laughs> death horn sounds real. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Stop so now they horn. now their powers just dissipate which i gotta say for something that takes place before the sequel trilogy is giving me we're gonna retcon out the sequel trilogy type of vibes or this exists in a in a different timeline type of vibes it's like i wonder if uh if they're going to put an entire trilogy of you know feature films into um you know uh, this is not canon any. <laughs> Or in the television yep. shows are now the new canon. Because um, I, I don't know how you square that circle, but I'm sure that they can come up with something. Yep. Um, yeah, so she says she can't train him, but uh, I guess, does that happen after? I don't even remember. They get to the town at some point, um, and oh, that's right. Uh, they, they have a bargain. She, 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 she lies to him and yeah. says, you know what, actually, if you help me, I'll train him. She doesn't mean mm-hmm. it. And you could tell she didn't mean it. Um, but he believed her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they and go so in. Then, then he, they kick yeah. a bunch of butt. Um, then uh, Ahsoka Tano and the, what's her name? The magistrate? The evil woman who yep. is torturing people in this town for some reason or maybe no reason. Uh, her and Ahsoka have a battle. She's got a Beskar, or is that a pike? What would you call it? Yeah, some kind of spear. A spear. spear. Yeah. yeah. She's got a best car spear, and so it can take some blows from the lightsaber without uh, being torn to shreds. And they have a pretty cool fight scene, which which is one of sort of my my happy points for this episode. Although they were all pretty much happy points for this episode. She loses, and then Ahsoka says, "You know, uh, where is your where is your uh, master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn?" And everybody goes. Oh! snap it's happening yep, that's true. <laughs> that's we, except that's my said. friends who who haven't watched anything but uh, the movies mm-hmm. and who were like and that was meaningless to them. yeah but for uh, me i was like <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, on my zoom call it was definitely everyone going yeah. is it yeah. and then i was like yeah it's that chiss guy and everyone's like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i think uh at least one of my predictions I, is going to come true Definitely. Yeah. I've I've read Heir to the Empire twice, like the trilogy. Oh man. It was like my like it was one of my favorite things to read when I was young. Mm. Uh, Timothy's on, baby. And to end the recap, then she sends them on a Jedi quest, mm. uh some you know, magic temple with a magic seeing yeah, stone that will font, magically yeah. yeah, that will magically show um him what to do next. I don't know what like this is it's so weird to me because it's almost like nothing in the sequel trilogy happened. Like they're going to Tython. Like is somebody when they get to Tython going to say like this was the place of the first Jedi Temple, and then th- like they're really just retconning out all the sequel trilogy because the whole Octo or whatever planet that was the you know location of the first Jedi Temple was saying you know all that stuff from the, all the legend stuff that that's not real anymore. Tython's no longer the location of the first. Jedi Temple. Now it's now it's Octo, uh, but now they're going to Tython, so it still exists. So there's still a chance that they're gonna they're gonna, I guess, disagree, or maybe they'll just say I, this I is even older than the other gonna, one. Yeah, it looked like they're just gonna say, "Look, this is an old temple." Mm-hmm. I don't think. I mean, like they might. I doubt they're gonna say it was the first. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But. Yeah, I think it's dangerous to say stuff like first or oldest or best. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think if they can yeah. try and be as generic as possible. Uh, I mean, like Star Wars specifically runs into this problem where you're like, and this is the last Jedi. (laughs) It's like, it's like, well, we, we, sorry, we don't mean that literally. Mm -hmm. There's like 42 Jedi. So like, it's not, it's not literally, but it's figuratively the last Jedi in the same way that this is the first temple or the oldest temple. It's not, it's not literally true. It's just, I mean, this is the oldest one we remember. So yeah, it's probably true. Oldest one we know about now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, it's, and it's already appeared in in the Disney canon comics anyway. I think Tython mm-hmm. was in. It is. Uh, I forget. Is 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 Darth Vader? The Darth Vader. Yeah, comic. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely. go, they go to Tython there, and they don't call. I don't believe in that issue that they called it the first. The first time. No. Time. Okay. Yeah. Um, incidentally, Grogu and Vader are the same age. They were born in the same year. Same person. Ooh. Called it. Never seen yeah. them in same the same person? place. Have you? Yeah. Have you yeah. seen? The, yeah. Have you seen them both in the same shot? <laughs> With jeans, guy. Surprise. <laughs> so you gotta wonder: Did Grogu start his training before Anakin? Uh. Yeah, that's a, a good question. Because Anakin was, they, they said Anakin was too old. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, that I, I, I really just wait till you meet Luke and Ray. I mean, yeah. you'll have to readjust what too old means <laughs> for sure. I, there's, there's a lot of dumb lines that they really have the opportunity to fix and they didn't. And that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Don't think like they it. had an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, should we do s scores yeah, for let's the do scores. episode four? Um, so the siege, what do you guys give? I gave it a nine only because I don't want to give every episode a 10. <laughs> so two, two thumbs up. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give it a 10. 10. Nice. I'm going to give it a nine only because I am giving the, the Jedi a 10. And I think that it's a better episode yeah. than the siege. It is a better episode, uh, but they're all they're all ten. They're all ten. They're all ten. Uh, yeah, I think I think I, it definitely in my thumb system. They're all they're all two thumb. Mm. Yeah, I mean this season, you know, there were some episodes in the in the first season that I wasn't crazy about, mm -hmm. but that mm -hmm. I actually were like, was like, ah, oh, you know what, that was kind of a waste. Like the uh, the prison episode. Uh, yeah, the oh, prison yeah, episode was the worst. I it mean, it not looked, good. It looked no. like a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> it, it was so hey, bad. Whoa, whoa. Before, before, <laughs> before, 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 it's so cheap. It looks like British. <laughs> oh, we are going to get killed for that one. Exterminate. Uh, I, they yeah. should have had a droid that said that. <laughs> Honestly, that would have been a good reference. But I, I agree with you, Jesse. There is some not um, to thumb up. There's some not yeah. 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. episodes of the, the show. The desert looks terrible in Tatooine. In, the, in, in this season, the, when, they visit, when he visits Tatooine, I mean, it looks like Tatooine. It looks great. In the other one, it looks like like the landscape looked like shadows of the empire for N64. It looked <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah. Good reference. But yeah. It was yeah. bad. Okay. Uh, Jesse, so you, what you give the Jedi a 10 as well? 10 out of 10. 10, out of 10. Oh yeah, uh, brother. And Alex, I'm guessing it's two thumbs up for you. It's two thumbs to, to number 10. Okay. Two thumbs worth five each. All right, everybody. Everybody gave it ten out of ten. Best episode ever, The Jedi. I think it is the best episode ever. But I mean, it has a lightsaber fight in it, which makes us seem like the kind of fans that Mandalorian was trying to get away from. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay, um, to, it's okay to give us a little Jedi every once yeah, in a yeah. while. I just, I agree. Just don't, uh, don't ruin your plot with. Jedi everywhere, as far as the eye can yeah. see. It's all Jedi. Yeah. They, they confirmed in the news now she's getting a spinoff. I heard so that. You're going to get an Ahsoka Tano. I mean, I'm not going to comment on that because whenever my dreams come to real life and I say them out loud, then then, <laughs> then it's the time for them to fail. It's time for them to die. Yeah. yeah I, I told people for years I wanted a Star Trek um, either TNG or a, or a solo Picard show. And I, I like, it was my like fondest dream. No. Um, <laughs> One of those yep, be know, careful what you wish for. Us. <laughs> yeah. Those immortal world words, you know, uh, sometimes dead is better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. Um, yeah, that was a, I, I really wish I hadn't wished that wish. Yeah. Okay. I should have wished for more wishes. Um, okay. So here's, here's baby Yoda talk. Watch. I think mm -hmm. he spoke to Ahsoka Tano, even though it was in his mind. I also agree and uh, would have to say that I think there is very little room for him to because she learned about the temple. Yeah. She learned concrete things. Yeah, it wasn't just like feelings or it wasn't like empathy that she gleaned from him. I mean, not just literally his name, although, again, she could 100 percent be making all of that up. And that would be, <laughs> be a awesome. hilarious grift. Just a hilarious grift from Ahsoka, where he didn't say any of that stuff. Yeah, Grogu is actually a curse word in their language, and that's <laughs> well, the only yeah, Yoda from, word that she knows. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> so she's yeah. like, it's his name. Great, Say yeah, it. Yeah. Because every time he says yeah, it, the kid turns around. Yeah. He's like, he's saying it's like, true. you know, the F word. And the kid's like, whoa, you said it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he keeps turning around like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes it's it, it's the worst word you can possibly say uh but yes i think we can officially say that he talked yeah i i, I think that's what we meant in the original pool i th- i could see some angry people uh emailing us about this i don't know but if i if I, I go back and i look at the intention of the parties in this case right um, I I really do think that 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 we're stretching this. I think the intention of that in the prediction pool was that he would speak he would speak he would, English he would words, vocalize galactic um, galactic, galactic basic com- words. All right, so we're gonna go with a half a half. I'm vote taking from that Jesse half. again. Okay, I think a half vote is he is fine. he was mind talking in in basic. For sure. I mean, I, I still stand by him talking like three episodes ago when <laughs> the subtitles clearly said that he was speaking. But you can't trust the subtitles. This is the same company that let a guy in jeans in the background. <laughs> no, the Jean. subtitles are meaningless. <laughs> Poor Gene, right? Okay. Okay. Actually, you know, I want to, for, sorry, for yeah. the siege, because they removed Gene's guy from the siege, I give it a nine. Nine? Yeah, it's one okay. off, yeah. Yeah. Gene's guy was putting it up to a 10. And I mean, yeah. I just, I, I don't like that Favreau took out Gene's guy. I really, I thought that was a fun thing for the fandom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, main character deaths in the siege, no. In the Jedi, no. Uh, resurrections or cameos. I mean, I guess Carl Weathers and Gina Carano, if that counts as a cameo. Uh, so we got those in the Jedi. Uh, we got Horatio Sands in the Jedi too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in, or sorry, not in the Jedi, in the Siege. And then in the Jedi, we got Ahsoka Tano. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's it. Um, yeah, I think that catches us up. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think I, I am surprised at that everyone survived that siege, mm. if we're being honest. Mm-hmm. I, I really thought this was going to be, especially like they keep hinting over and over again that like, you know, they, they OSHA the guys like, you know, like step up on this <laughs> pillar. And I was like, oh, this is going to be it for sure. And the, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that everybody survived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really want anyone to die. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, there's this character that I want to die, but I mean, I think that's some real world bleeding in, and so we won't. Lose <laughs> yeah, I know. Gina Carano. <laughs> no, no, I, well, we don't know. What's who her was. character's name? Uh, uh, Kara, something. Kara. That sounds right. Definitely Kara. Kind of, yeah. I think uh, what Disney should just do is say that the character is officially trans. And then just let everything else take care of itself. <laughs> oh man, I think that uh, it's a, it's a lose lose at this point. Be, yeah. No, that would be great. I mean, then it would be like it would be like, yeah, you work for us. Um, <laughs> Disney owns everything, and we're telling you what you think, Gina. <laughs> Delete your Twitter account or disappear. Yeah. Right. Actually disappear. We got bag man yeah. that'll carpet bag you. <laughs> Disney will put you in the river. We own you, Dina. <laughs> Why do you think he's always yeah. wearing those gloves? Why do you think Mickey's wearing those gloves? No <laughs> fingerprints. He's always ready. <laughs> um, okay, you want to go to episode chat? Let's do it. All right, episode chat for The Siege. Um, mine are quick, so I'll go first. Uh, my first one is one that I thought was funny, but it's a little nitpick. Um Early on in the episode, they land and uh, they go to, uh, they they take Mando and the kid to a classroom so that he can leave the kid, the, the child there, Grogu there, while they go and do this siege of the base. And he takes a seat in this class and then you get like a wide shot of the class. And every kid in that class appears to me to be a human. Now, like right before yep. this, there's a little like market scene where you get to see that there are tons of people from other species, uh, obviously not humans, walking around, selling wares, buying stuff, talking to one another. But this class is humans only. I don't know what's going on here, but it's it's a little concerning to me that this is there. There are no alien kids. Al- I don't know if they're not allowed, <laughs> if they have their own classes somewhere else, but they're not here. What's 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 going on? Yeah, 
I mean, it, it's an interesting point that like Star Wars, which is famous for like alienating up uh, everybody from bartenders to taxi drivers. It, it is strange. I can't think of why in canon, why they wouldn't have any aliens in the class. I think there's I think you could see like one, but like, yeah, it's not. It's not very clear, and it's and it's certainly not. Um, they certainly didn't make a point of trying to, you know, have a Doctor Mandible situation mm-hmm. where it's like it's like, oh, that's Carl and Kutuk, yeah. and like yeah. Kutuk has got like you know feathers out of his yeah. eyes and like all <laughs> kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. They, they just don't do that. And, and I, I did, I, I did also think the same thing when I saw that scene, and I and I did think it was weird. I don't think it's like I don't think this is like a separation of like class based people or something. I don't know, Jesse. What do you think? No, I mean, I think it's I, I think it was just for it spent too much money. It would cost too much money and they didn't want to try to get a kid into makeup. Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably what it boiled down to. I, I agree. It would have been interesting if there were like some alien children in the class, too. But I think it was probably they're like, OK, we'll have like an ethnically diverse group of children, although I do see a lot of white kids and that's still. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think they, they they tried to make it diverse and uh, they were just like make alien makeup is too much work. Mm-hmm. I like how they made the bar into the school yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right like i just feel like it's kind of weird how this is one of the scenes that i didn't i wasn't crazy about how they're just like yeah and for half a day we're gonna let baby yoda go to school but we're it's not meaningful it's just so he can (laughs) sit there like they just want the teacher to babysit him Mm -hmm. he's not really he's not doing anything he's not gonna learn anything it's one day Mm -hmm. right yeah, but I mean, right. I mean Jesse, you're just de- you're describing the entire education system in our country, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, I know that you've got a beef with teachers and that they're yeah. useless. He's this, no, no, no. A single dad, he needs to go to work. He drops his yeah, kid off exactly. at school, picks him up when he's done. Oh uh, man, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and again, maybe, maybe there's fight. a metaphor here that we, you know, that they were trying to sell us on. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, but I I do agree that I, education was definitely not. It was literal babysitting, and in, in some television shows, you you have a babysitter, but this was uh, literally uh, setting up a scene for babysitting. Mm-hmm. It's kind of mean because you're letting the you're you're letting you're like, you're putting them with other kids, and I mean also you you think if he's like I'm a fifty year old man, <laughs> I like I went to he went to the Jedi Academy, right? Like right. he was a jet he was a Jedi. He was trained by. By Jedi's, and I'm kind of like, you know, like he must be sitting there thinking, like, I'm 50 years old. I was trained in the in the Jedi arts in in the Jedi school. Sorry, there was like this bug crawled into the room. Get it? Get it? <laughs> Completely distracted. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> Is it winning? No, it's it's losing. Doctor Mandible lost. <laughs> Poor um, and, anyway, but um. Yeah, like I wonder if he kind of feels like why why are you why are we having this discussion? I'm a 50 year old mm-hmm. man. Why am I in right. class with these children? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? That one has French macaroons. Yeah. I'm uh, gonna steal his package, <laughs> brightly colored candy. Uh, macaroons. You know, this day wasn't a waste at all. <clears throat> I hope that uh, when when Grogu gets all of his memories back, he. Uh, he he becomes a 50 year old man and he, he just, <laughs> and he's mature and remembers everything and he's like oh thank you <laughs> thank you for helping yeah. me out mandalorian i really appreciate yeah. it he'll talk like this thank you yeah. mandalorian <laughs> we will part as friends thanks youngin i appreciate all you have done for me child <laughs> i will be on my you way could now. point me in the direction of the frog people's planet <laughs> i am hungry for reasons <laughs> they, they do mention that they they might are going extinct so like i mean you can put two and two together yeah. Grogu, eater of worlds. <laughs> Literally. Um, the next point that I had, again, it's a, like another shortish one. Well, not short, but it's just a a comment that sort of clearly placed us or, or explained what, um, what sort of universe we're in. I'll just play it. I highly doubt we'll find a donor with a higher M count, though. Okay, that's it right there. Highly doubt we'll find a donor with a higher M count. So, so M M M's got to stand for midichlorian. Yep. We got to be back in midichlorian territory. Yep. Um, it's midichlorian. Yeah. Yep. Um, I I don't know. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna ask what you guys think about midichlorians making a comeback. Right. Okay. So I think that this is like I was saying earlier. They had a chance to fix old problems, and 
uh, I'm on team science fiction. Just ignore the old problems that you had and just like leave them, leave empty space so that people can fill in the blanks themselves. Mm. Uh, I think I think this very specific reference, I don't know if it was supposed to be like a, a cool throwback for like the older fans to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that movie from like 1990. Like that. It, it, but I, I, I don't think that it was an interesting direction for the force. I think that every every time you make stuff more specific, you 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 make stuff, in my opinion, worse. Mm. I like. I like that the force is is unknowable. The fact that you can measure it in this very easy way is is frustrating to me. But um, I did think there was a reference that was put in for fans, and I do think that it was something that I mean, absolutely. I mean, all of my friends talked about for like ten hours. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, it's clearly doing that part. What do you think, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think they're just trying to create a little bit of continuity in, in a very small way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, well, they'll probably never talk about it again. Um, but they never, it's not like Lucas ever wreck, like it's never been retconned. It, it's, it's, it's a part of the again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's just like no one ever years. talked. <laughs> yeah. And just after 1999, no one ever spoke about it again. So, yeah. Um, uh, my last one is just that, um, after she tells, uh, the, the handler tells Moff Gideon that the tracking beacon has been planted, um, he doesn't go after them right away. He's obviously hatching some larger scheme. And I'm wondering whether he he knows that, like, you know, if he allows the child to be free and the Mando is going to bring him to the Jedi, maybe he wants to, you know, capture more subjects for their experiments. So they're looking for, you know, more force sensitive people and he's going to swoop in at, you know, Tython or something to... uh to try to capture them. It, it's very interesting to me. I'm, I'm hoping that's the case that he's, he's going to try to do some sort of scoop and, and just pick up a whole bunch of force sensitive people all at once. And, and I don't know, inject himself with their blood. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Doing transfusions, I guess. And then he'll get like muscles. He'll grow like, his, he'll rip <laughs> out of his, he'll rip out of his thing. And he'll be like, ah, but she might be from his hand, you know? And he like, like, I don't know, like when Jafar turns into the genie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, classic scene. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I got the impression that Gideon is smarter than he has appeared so far with that very strange standoff that he somehow lost. Yeah. Um, at the end of last season, so I, I do think that he's much more clever than he appears. I do think that you're right that he's not just setting a trap and he doesn't just want to get the child back. Um, there is more to his plan. And I think that, I think that you're right. If he can, if he can get a couple of Jedi, that would be, that would be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that like, I still think that the whole them escaping, uh, was, uh, was done on purpose. He let him go. Like, you know, there's. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You got till sun. I could, I could kill you now, but I'm going to give you till sundown for. For some right. reason. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I mean not to not to get too Star Warsy, uh like the the Han Solo being like it's like like that was way too easy. Mm-hmm. Like they must be tracking <laughs> us. And 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 I was like, as a viewer, when like when when they don't blow up and that standoff, it's like, yeah, they clearly want mm-hmm. him to leave. Yeah. So like I don't know. I, I I agree. I think that Lucas, you know, 40 years ago did a good job of being like, yeah, this is ridiculous. How could we beat all like hundreds and hundreds of people and escape? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and in in character, they actually say that that just makes no sense. Mm-hmm. This time, I think uh, maybe maybe not as much, but it was also a cool reference. Yeah. I mean, not only not only the tracking, the tracking devices in place sequence, the long walk in the corridor mm-hmm. it was like all of these cool references to New Hope. It's just, it's just really cool. Yeah. Like, I really I really like that they're doing um, that they're doing a lot of these throwbacks for us because, I mean, I, pre- I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah. Okay, those are my points. Uh, who wants to go next? Jesse, why don't you go? All right. Sure. I, um, you know, I'm going to do, like, I don't have a lot to say about this. This is a great episode. I like that um, they had Horatio Sands back. It doesn't make sense that Horatio Sands is back because how did he get back to Navarro? But I don't care. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to make sense. He's <laughs> back. Um, and he's fun now that he's part of that, like, group of people who who Mando can link up with every once in a while. You know, when the season started, I I complained a little bit that the episodes 
you know, they weren't giving us enough at the beginning of the season. Um, I, I think I like what they're doing better now. Um, I, I like that they started it slower and they're, and they're sort of slowly building an intensity each episode Mm -hmm. last. I know in the first season you kind of have to, you know, like start strong. And then they went to these sort of like lighter episodes. Um, and it, the, the pacing felt off in the first season, but this feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think they've, they've built this slowly and I think it really works. Um, I do love the uh, if you go to the three minute mark, this 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 is oh, one of those hey. things that just kind of drives me crazy. Not only is he a bad father, yeah. but he's got the child <laughs> climbing inside of these holes in the ship doing complex electrical yeah. work on a ship that's in space, and he electrocutes himself. And he's just mm-hmm. like he's like, hey, hey, stop that. Yeah, you all right? <laughs> You're good. You're yeah. good. <laughs> you all right, kid? Yeah, I mean, actually, to to that scene it, again puts me in a weird spot because I know we're supposed to think that Grogu is cute. Uh, but like, it's this sort of like a compared to a dog situation. It's like, Oh yeah. Like dogs are as smart as like, you know, eight month year old humans. So like, where is Grogu? Mm-hmm. Is he as smart as like a five year old? Like, is this like trying to get your five year old to like connect the right color cables? Because I think if you're slow and patient, like Din is trying to be, I think I think you could get a five year old. I mean, I wouldn't do it in the <laughs> like Jesse said in space at, with like very dangerous uh, like cables and stuff. But is is the child capable of like a five year old human? Is he a ten year old? Like yeah. I, I I definitely yeah. do not know where my read is on this. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't get like a sense of how smart he is yeah. or like where his development is. Like I mean, he is. He is the same age as Darth Vader, so he's you know, he's <laughs> supposed to be fifty years old. Um, and you kind of got to wonder, like, I mean, like maybe their maybe their their brain development, the species, is really really slow. Mm-hmm. But then you think, well, but they they he was already training at the Jedi yeah. Temple, which would mean what was he doing? He was there? a pat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like so you just kind of wonder, like, what what level is he at? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they yeah, they, I mean that that good. He has some training in the Force, so he he's able to take instruction. Right. Like he's, uh, I guess, uh, and that's also another question. Like, you know, if force abilities have to be trained for the most part, um, you know, ignoring the recent stuff. um, And he is clearly able to, you know, hold things, levitate things, push things uh, and and force choke, it appears, which is a little bit odd. Um, because who taught him that, but <laughs> like, what have you been doing since the order 66 <laughs> happened? Yeah. Maybe you were on the other side. Maybe this is all a long con. Um, right. Maybe he was Darth Vader's pet for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he was Palpatine's Anakin pet. Anakin was cutting his way through the younglings and he got to this one and he's like, well, that's just adorable. <laughs> right. You know what? Forget about all the other kids I just murdered. This one I'm keeping. Right. And then for a while, Vader was just carrying this one around. And then one day he left the door open and a kid wandered out. Yeah. Yeah. Th- there is there is that that specific scene, which I guess we'll probably talk about a bit more, but like that specific problem is one of those ones that I'm just going to, you know, yeah. let pass. Like when did he leave mm-hmm. and which Jedi? masters knew about him mm-hmm. because the timing of that is very doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. but you know whatever uh how, like how much training was he doing or was he like did he just arrive like he i again the timing it doesn't it does, absolutely does not add up yeah. but you know what it's a big universe it's complicated i i let them you yeah know, well, the corners. But, you know it's it's even like you know the whole of the clone wars show yeah or like like it all of a sudden like they're back at episode three and it's like hey nothing changed i'm still your i'm still your you know like you're still the yeah. master right and i'm your your apprentice mm-hmm. cool right that whole thing never happened you you think he'd be like when he's in his moment he'd be like i should call ahsoka ton no because <laughs> yeah. she doesn't exist yeah. <laughs> to him at that point there is no there were no clone wars mm-hmm. so it's star wars it doesn't pretend yeah. to be perfect yeah no, and I don't want perfection. I really don't. I yeah. like rough edges because, like I said, I can have a six-hour <coughs> midichlorian discussion with my friends. Yeah. Um, I do think that the midichlorians were just because... It, Honestly, yeah. Ew. Sorry, Jesse. Yeah, That's, it was actually six hours ago. Man, on, I was just going to say that I think that wow. that whole thing happened because they got caught up in what was happening in the real world at the time, right? Like, it was mm-hmm. the height of, you know, mapping the human genome 
uh, you know, yeah. genetics mania. And, and they're like, well, let's really need to get some of that in here, too. <laughs> so they just threw it in. Yeah. What, what makes one person a good Jedi and not another one? How could exactly. you inherit it from your father? Yeah. Oh, you know what? It's it's it's. It's in your it's in your genes. It's, it's a, <laughs> your, your body has a high amount of these particles in it, or whatever they are. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So, what was the consensus on your six hour conversation? That oh, the metachlorians are awesome. No, it, it, believe it or not, it was the opposite. Is that uh, it feels like? <laughs> yeah, it feels like <laughs> like specific. I mean, there's some some questions about like so they're attracted to people who naturally have the force. Like, so are they attracted to? animals that nearly have like have like there's force plants there's force planets yeah. it's like are they more it, it it i think like a lot of science fiction i think the specific one doesn't give us more interesting things to work with i think it it, it limits yeah. um like writing as opposed to enhancing it like um not to talk about how amazing the expanse is all day but like I, I feel like the the specifics of like how the wormholes work, the specifics of like all of the mechanics of the expanse, mm -hmm. just make the world better. It, they don't they don't limit your writing, mm -hmm. as opposed to in Star Wars stuff like this, uh, especially in such a cool setting that is so big. I think stuff like this um, just limits limits what you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's because it's not science fiction, right? Not mm -hmm. in the truest sense. Yeah. No, no, no like, it's absolutely not, like Star Wars. Yeah, it's just it's it, it's just adventure. It's 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 a it's westerns. It's fantasy. It's it's just an adventure. It doesn't need to be, um, you know. It's like Lord of the Rings doesn't need to explain a lot of stuff about you know like we we don't need to know about elf anatomy mm -hmm. or you know like we don't need specifics. <laughs> we just need to know that they're they live for a long time and they get to go to this other place eventually. Yeah. Um, and you know like like at the the rest of it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think um, if it doesn't have you know, plot we, significance, then then it doesn't need to exist. Like, don't explain. Yeah, it. Okay. and sometimes a mist, a little mystery. Like, I, I mean, I would be happy if like we never saw any of the prequels. I like that that kind of like wonder when I was a kid and you saw the first, like you saw a New Hope, um, and you hear you know Obi Wan talk about the Clone Wars, and you're like, wow, you know what were the Clone Wars? Mm -hmm. You didn't even know that they're like who had the clones, you know. Who do the clones belong to? Were they cloning people? Was was it some type of thing? You know what I mean? Like you had no clue what the clone wars were about, and it just sounded really cool. Mm -hmm. um, the reality wasn't as cool. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. The clone. Yeah, it just it was like yeah. oh. It, it was oh I guess it just wars with clones fighting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Although, like, like, it would have been cooler if it was like when I was a kid, I was pictured it as this thing where it was like you could you didn't know who you could trust because mm -hmm. they were cloning they were cloning like Jedi's and cloning people and you never knew who was a clone and who and I thought like like that kind of like a Cold War situation might have been neat. Yeah. But uh, when I was a kid, that's how I pictured it. Like it was some type of like covert covert war using clones to like take people over and yeah. I don't know. Which you think if you are like they're always trying to assassinate some senator. You know, let's kill this yeah. senator, that senator. Why not we just replace them with a clone who does what does what you tell them to do? Like exactly. This this is sort of exactly the midichlorian problem. Mm -hmm. Like when you introduce cloning, it just be starts being like, wait, why isn't why doesn't everyone have like ten clone backups then? <laughs> like and again, in the old EU, um, a certain person had hundreds and hundreds of clone mm -hmm. backups, and it was a horrible storyline. But <laughs> we won't talk about that. Dark Empire, baby. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, 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 those are great comics for the art, though. I love the, like the Dark Empire series. Mm -hmm. They looked so good. That was the first time Boba Fett was resurrected. <laughs> the first and not the last. <laughs> no, no. But that's the first one. And that's where he gives Han Solo the line because they're on Nar Shadda. And he says, he, he, he asks him, yeah, yeah, Solo's like incredulous. And Boba Fett's like, it found me indigestible. And you're like, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, <laughs> Boba Fett didn't, indigestible. Mm. The best writing ever. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alex. Uh, All right. Uh, so. The first thing I wanted to ask each of you was, uh, so they're in school and I really liked the sort of idea of normal life in the galaxy. I, re I really like that kind of stuff, but I think it would be fun for each of you to come up with one subject that they are being taught in school. So Bert in the outer realm or the, uh, the outer rim, what is, uh, one subject that they're teaching these kids? Well, I mean, in the actual episode, they're, they're teaching them, I guess, uh, spatial <laughs> geography, geography, uh, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the, the Which... different trade routes and the, the different sort of wormhole 
uh, travel routes throughout the galaxy. So, so clearly that's important. I, I don't know how many of these kids they don't really seem like they're going to make it off planet anytime. But I guess they got to know. I, actually, that's entirely my point. Is that like if yeah, if is this? I mean, I I, I feel like going back to high school and like sitting there with all the kids learning physics mm -hmm. and calculus, and you're looking around the room and you're like. You know, I don't think Edgar, Edgar over there that last week put like put his uh, his his like his pen into the socket. I don't think yeah. that he's going to need calculus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so so to your point, Bert, I think the geography, while while important, uh, may not be. I don't think any of these people are getting no. on a spaceship ever. Yeah. But 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 a, a good point. So, yeah. Jesse, what is one thing that they're teaching these kids? Were they really teaching them geography? Like, is that a thing? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That happened That's absolutely episode? what they were teaching them. Because yeah, they, they have the space map. Like, the person has the space map at the front of the class. So, like, those spacey maps. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if it was 3D geography. Yeah, yeah, like, it, I was. Wonder if it, there was. Were, it was. It was. Yeah. She's it was 3D. How do you know? You, you, like, you can see. Straight? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the droid is, uh, you can hear her, her lesson plan in the background. Oh, I didn't listen that carefully. I was just like, ah, oh, droids. Ooh, space maps. <sighs> Mm, blue cookies. Um, <laughs> I think she was about to separate the girls from the boys and take the girls to the home ec class oh, and teach right. them how to prepare frog eggs. That's why they're only humans in this class. They've they've split up because yeah. they're going to do home ec. Exactly. And, and <laughs> it's health. If you want they're... a good space husband, you must learn how to make frog eggs. Yeah, yeah. I th I think that is a good point. But uh, yeah, I, I just think it's interesting. I think I think filling out the universe with stuff like everyday yeah. stuff, like a grocery store, a market, the bazaar, and school um, helps. You know, of somebody that's watching this, like me, uh, watch it. Be like, yeah, I wonder what they would be teaching mm -hmm. these kids. But I, I just thought it was cool. Teach them not to, uh, not to mix with the aliens. That's what they're teaching them. <laughs> I do yeah. think that it might be somewhat implied by our both the class systems uh, and, of course, the 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 hierarchy of of social economic status for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, this is one thing though where they made a mistake. I think they shouldn't have completely killed the IG 88 model. Um, in the first season, I would have loved to have seen the IG model teaching the class. Teacher. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that. that would have been a nice thing where like, like, yeah, he got shot in the chest or something at the end, but they like, now he's like, he's the, he's the teacher for the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that, that kind of stuff sounds really cool. And I, yeah. I also just like the idea of, it, it's a universe where everything's broken. Nobody really understands the tech and they're just trying their best. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, and, and, and I agree that stuff like that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, the dank ferric. Uh, we of course <laughs> got one more dank ferric, yep. which I believe puts us at four. Um, I'm going to make sure to keep everyone apprised of the amount of dank ferrics we have. Um, but we have another one, so that's a total of four. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll make, maybe just have it on screen. Uh, you know, like every episode, yeah. uh, Alex will be in charge of, it of the recap. Corner, the dank fair yeah. count. Yeah. Yeah. The dank fair. <laughs> there's, there's going to be like a Star Wars themed, like cover band or, oh, yeah. or, oh, yeah. Or a group oh. calling themselves dank fair. Yeah. Like you, I, you can see that coming. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, think, yeah. You can. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, the next brief thing I want to talk about is just, uh, yeah, you want to roll this? Yeah. Oh my. There's no guardrail on this. Come on! <laughs> I mean, the, There's the no fact, guardrail on this. I mean, this is again, one of the, like, a hundred references this for us, for New Hope people, that, like, people are like, what kind of engineer would put controls with no guardrail and thousands of mm -hmm. like this is pa how Palpatine dies. Like they're just like guardrails would make uh, make things a lot easier. Yeah. And this is another like cool small reference to us new because again like as everyone I'm sure remembers that in New Hope when Obi Wan or sorry yeah when Obi Wan is like climbing through and like changing the stuff and is there's just nothing protecting anything <laughs> like the idea that turning off so, the shield generator yeah exactly. They put it, just, instead of putting it in a central control room yeah. where you would have like like the Death Star's bridge, you're like, where should we put that control? On a post <laughs> yeah. with no guardrail with Hundreds a thousand foot feet. drop yeah. underneath it. It's, I mean, this is just a reference to that. And I again, John Favreau is giving us a lot, a lot of these cool little things. And I, I thought it was very funny and a cool reference for, for us. 
And uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about. Sorry, is that, one thing uh, that I just wanted to say is oh, that like, w- the way I always interpreted the Empire's architecture was this is what you get when, you know, the price of the raw materials is more to you than the price of the lives of the people who might fall well, and die. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do think you make a good point, which is that when the, yeah, when, when the people are the least uh, expensive resource, then you don't need to put yeah. guardrails or anything because a uh, gym fell down. It's like, eh. How much does it I cost to buy two- another gym? 40 bucks. How about the metal for the guardrail yeah. to save gyms? 50 bucks. No guardrail. Yeah, See, bad. I think a lot of the engineering was done when they were still using clones, yeah. right? Because they were like, yeah. they were like, no, what does it matter? We got so many of them. <laughs> They're everywhere. Again, I think, what if problem. somebody has to do it? And the guy's like, what do you mean somebody has to do it? We're in the middle of the clone wars. We're going to use clones forever. We're never going to stop. Right. When, when you have clones, you have, you creating a problem where, like Bert said, you could, like, it gym falls down. It doesn't matter. You got thousands of gyms. Mm-hmm. So just stick another gym in. Um, and so, yeah, the last thing I want to talk about was 33 minutes, which is yet, yet another of these um, uh, references for us. Um, yeah. You want to roll that quick? It's not a long scene. It's just, you know, a ship. Look at that. On screen for 15 seconds. Uh-huh. Oh man, just so glorious! I again, of course, the the iconic opening to to the entire franchise being the twenty seconds of a of a ship passing by, and just setting up the sheer scale and the sheer investment uh, of 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 Star Wars, and it's just another great reference uh, and a great Easter egg slash you know homage. Uh, and I, I just really liked it. Also, the ship just looks incredible. Mm-hmm. It yeah, really and it, I mean, and I like it's one of those callbacks too to the to the uh, to the the animated series because I think it's one of the light cruisers that they use in Rebels, right? Yeah, that, that looks right. Yeah. Okay, okay, I think that's what I want to talk about in Siege. Let's talk about the Jedi. Um, the Jedi. <laughs> mine are really quick. Um, um, first one. Grogu and I can feel each other's thoughts. Grogu? Don't speak for me. Yes. Sorry. Okay, so yeah. His name is Grogu. I like the name. Uh, we talked about it quickly before. Uh, it's either his name or, you know, the dirtiest curse word in his language <laughs> so that she can pretend like she talked to him while she makes up a story. Um, but yeah, I, I like the name. I think it, 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 like Jesse said, it fits with the name of the sort of Yoda species that we've seen before. Um, in, I guess, canon, um, I think the, the Yoda species master from KOTOR is named like Vendar or Vandar or Vondar, which doesn't sound very much like a Yoda name. I think Grogu is more what I would expect than that. Yeah. They have fun little names, this species. I'm, I'm Yoda. I'm, I'm Grogu. Yeah. Yep. My main point is the battle right the battle scene and and not anything about the actual sort of uh scripting or the uh the actual sort of fight sequence itself but just the fact that it sort of turns on its head what you usually see which is you know the two male leads fighting one another while the two i guess female supporting characters sort of uh, talk whereas here the the two you know uh primary fighters are the female characters while the men wait outside and have a chat and <laughs> about who's going to win. It was, it was kind of nice that they sort of turned that on its head and it didn't feel uh, like surprising. Like it, it made perfect sense mm. within the story and it made perfect sense within the lore. Uh, so I thought that was really nice to see him really fantastically done. Yeah. And then the, I don't know if you guys had any thoughts on the fight sequence itself or if you want to save them for later. Uh, I, yeah, I, I love yeah, the fight ahead. sequence. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I thought it was great. I mean, this, the, you know, but that was clearly a throwing spear that she had. <laughs> um, you'd never, you'd never use it that way. Um, no, um, it was a really great fight sequence. I like that they, we know now that Beskar um, is, is immune to lightsabers. Cause we see it not only here where she fights her with the spear, mm. uh, but uh, what is, is her name? Morgan Elspeth, right? Mm. Um, uh, not only do we see her fight Ahsoka Tana with a spear 
um, and really well. I mean, kudos to her, even though she's a really, really evil person mm -hmm. um, on on sort of being able to last this long against the Jedi. Um, few people who aren't Jedis get get to last this long fighting a Jedi, even even when they're properly equipped as she is. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, uh, but we also saw it happen with Mando, right? Like he yeah. uses his arms to block to yeah. block the lightsaber at the beginning. Um, you know that that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think that's neat. Uh, I liked the fight; it was really nice. I don't know why that guy didn't just turn in his guns and walk yeah. away. Um, outside, like you saw with the Mandalorian, do, do you, even if you you're gonna have to get him between the armor, you know the best guy is gonna stop whatever you shoot at him. Um, why not just you have a chance to go, just go. Yeah, right. It's the same. It's one of those things that they do in every spy movie and every superhero movie. There's always that one last person who thinks. Even though this guy killed everyone else, I have a chance. I got this knife behind um, my back. He'll never see it coming. <laughs> yeah. I've got, even though he's still got his full weaponry, I have a little secret pocket gun. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I, you're not getting them. Yeah. Anyway. Should but it's left. fun. It's, it's, a, it's a regular thing that they do in every action, you know, a lot, a lot of action movies, so it's fine. But maybe, that guy should have ran. Maybe he thought he, would, he, he had no chance. Maybe, maybe he thought that the Mandalorian was going to kill him. Maybe he thought it was. Uh, maybe, yeah was like a kotor mandalorian who just kills everybody they meet so. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that's fair i mean true mandalorians probably would yeah uh din is din is of course um not as hardcore as that yeah i i actually did want to talk briefly about that exact thing like being bulletproof does reduce the the, the stakes on a lot of these sequences i still thought the sequence was cool it was supposed to be a western sequence in a western show and din hasn't been the central focus of, of, of every single episode. Uh, Bo Katan saves him a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, he gets saved by Kim's convenience uh, mm -hmm. a couple episodes ago. So, you know, I, it was nice to see him like holding his own in the episode. It was also nice um, to see. It was a cool scene. Like I it, like the tension. It was supposed to be, you know, the, that classic Western scene or like Jesse said, like the action movies where the, the evil guy just can't help himself. Yeah. He really thinks that he can take him out. But I mean, he's bulletproof. Like I, I, I don't, I, I really don't understand. And it's not like he doesn't understand that because he earlier in the episode is like, oh man, I'm like nice armor, yeah. like, and so like it, he, he knows what's going <laughs> yeah. on. So I, like, if it was a, a grenade, if it was, uh, you know, a special weapon that's specifically made to kill Mandalorians, mm -hmm. I, 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 like, I guess if you had, you know, what um, I used it before now, yeah. it was. Yeah, exactly. It's like, let me get my Mando gun out of my boot. <laughs> so, you know the long rifle he has on his back, mm -hmm. which he um, he loses while they're scuffling in in the episode. That long rifle, the big disintegration ray, it would probably do, put a dent in Beskar. Mm -hmm. Like it would probably do some damage to him. So, like if he was reaching for something like that, but like that's one of the reasons why it's telegraphed to be you know eight foot tall. Mm -hmm. Like it's supposed to be a very very difficult weapon to wield, and that's I don't know. I I I, I found the scene was cool, but I, I I do think that we have a Beskar problem now in the same way that we have a Jedi problem or a clone problem yeah. like we we have a new problem which is that every every scene i don't know why it's not just like mando stand in front of the bullets yeah. like human shield it, I, I, we need <laughs> we, i really do hope that we get reined in with some you know very quickly anti-mando uh or anti-beskar technology or at least somebody reference that like anti anti well, it's gotta because exist, right like well i mean we that's the whole exists. the whole uh uh sabine wren her the, yep. the 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 Beskar anti Beskar weapon thing, right? Like she, yep. Maybe that's maybe that's coming for him. Maybe maybe uh, Moff Gideon's got one of those in his back pocket. I think that's fair. His I dark just, I, trooper, his dark troopers will have like Beskar piercing rounds yeah. for sure. They will. Like, I mean, they absolutely, again, it's sort of like when you go to fight a Jedi, you you set up your tools for fighting a Jedi when you're fighting. Um, Din, when you're finding Mandalorian, you absolutely go in with weapons that can do something to Beskar, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe magnets, maybe <laughs> like something else. Like, That'd like be the best. There's <laughs> got to be something. A, big, a giant big magnet. They're all, sucks. they're all stuck to it like this. <laughs> they're like, yeah, poor Bo Katan gets killed by. They found by out a our giant weakness. <laughs> giant <laughs> magnets. <laughs> Like I'm just spitballing. That'd ideas be the here. best. Oh my god, I'd love to see that. 
And he's just like, oh, no. <laughs> that's that's what Grand Admiral Thrawn is planning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come onto His the planet master. with him. Yeah. <laughs> I've looked at the Mandalorian art and I've determined that the weakness is magnets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Please let it happen. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are my points. Uh, why don't we go to, I guess Alex went last last time. Why don't we go to Alex next? All right. All right. So people that know me will know this rant. Um, it's a rant I do uh, over and over and over. And here it comes again. So um, it's at 11 10. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't really need to watch the sequence. But it's um, it's all of these people being tortured. So I am against torture, and I mean, I mean that might sound um, silly. I am against torture even being depicted. I think that it is something that's easy to write. I think that it, it very clearly telegraphs how evil she is, but I, I don't think it has a place in fiction. I don't think it does anything but encourage people to think out their most uh, darkest sort of like snuff filmy kind of desires. I don't think torture is effective. I don't think torture would be effective from a military point of view, from a crowd control point of view, especially in the Star Wars universe. You have access to magic, literally. You have access to any kind of cool technology. You can have like collars that blow off their heads or whatever. And I, I'm not saying that that's not a psychological kind of torture, but actual physical on screen torture, mm-hmm. I just don't want to be written ever. I also don't want on-screen sexual assault. I don't like either of them. I personally think they are lazy writing, and that's just my hot take. I really disliked it, and I will have this rant on every show because every show does torture. Mm -hmm. And I I just think that it is lazy writing. It's shorthand for, um, you know, the most gruesome thing that these writers can think of. She's evil. What does she do? How do we establish she's evil? Ah, uh, put a bunch of tortured people outside. <laughs> right. And I mean, the other telegraphs that she's evil is that she has destroyed the entire planet, which I think <laughs> so telegraphs that she's evil. She also, the village people are horribly afraid of even talking to outsiders mm-hmm. without fear of, uh, of, you know, just getting killed. You don't need to torture people. Like Maybe I she did all the other stuff first. Yeah, this is all she has left. Really. And she was <laughs> like, she was like, look, I, I raised the entire planet <laughs> and they're like, we're not scared of you. And then they got these little, like these electric stockades. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, Whoa, yeah. stay in the house kids. Yeah. I, I also think that it's kind of part of it too is like this this natural escalation like what like what like the naturally the the worst thing that they can do other than you know slavery which they are doing like is torture and I I hate it I don't want it written in fiction I understand that there is torture in Star Wars but I I think that like any piece of fiction it doesn't need it and I think that it only detracts from my enjoyment of the sequence and that is my rant. Nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the the question becomes like, what uh, when they need to show somebody being more evil than than she is, then then what? Like, then they they pulling out they're well, pulling out fingernails. They got bamboo shoots. Like, like it's sort of uh, being genocide by eating someone's eggs. <laughs> yeah, he's the true. Watch he's the true monster. One of your kids. The true monster, Grogu. Destroy your but, world. Uh, the, like and like we already said, all of the other things that they used to telegraph how evil she is is enough. Mm. You don't need on-screen torture. Yeah, like you could literally Fair have enough. like that guy in the alley could have been like, she's torturing people in there, and, and then like, okay, we got it. She's evil. Done. Yeah, I mean, she she'll kill us just for talking to you. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, that's that's ten out of ten evil. We don't need to go farther yeah, than that. She killed my brother because um, he sneezed weird. Like, whoa, she's really evil. <laughs> Uh, and the, the other things uh, that I wanted to talk about, really, we, we've already covered in our um, in our meandering through. I can't say anything more about Ahsoka than that I absolutely loved her. Uh, her fight sequence in the beginning was incredible. Her fight sequence at the end was incredible. I just love Ahsoka. I think that they did an amazing job of her. I think the cool homages to her fighting style Mm -hmm. um, um, that they did to to reference her Clone Wars fighting style. Mm. 
I I thought that Ahsoka was cool. I thought she was um, she looked older. I think that the, she she and she she seemed wiser. If we're being honest, mm-hmm. I know we talked about the I can't train Grogu. It's going to go horrible like s- sequence. And I and I think that to me, that's absolutely something that Ahsoka would say. She's seen what happens, and she she knows that she's probably not the right person to train Grogu. And so I, I just think that she was executed unbelievably well. I really don't think they could have done a better job. And that that's really, that's really all I can say about Ahsoka other than like 10 out of 11 out of 10. Like she's just, she's just so, so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Rosario Dawson did, did an amazing job. Yeah. I mean, I think they cast, they cast this so well. Yeah. I I'll, I, mean, I can't wait for that spinoff series yeah. if if that's a real thing if Disney's not just teasing us I mean I think that's a really interesting um, spinoff series for sure. man if you were a fan of Clone Wars and again mm-hmm. I didn't really watch it but I mean this this has got to be the season of Mandalorian for a Clone Wars oh, fan yeah. you've so right. much Clone Wars stuff yeah it's no, all it, over the it place. is uh, and some Rebel and stuff Rebels, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, so like I think that it's good, and like we said earlier, it's not just Clone Wars and Rebels and these sort of in between stuff. It's also set up shots that are New Hope shots, just to like to. It's mm-hmm. tying it in, like you said earlier, Jesse. Like it's tying in cool stuff with easy continuity stuff that is the fans are just going to love, and I think they they hit it out of the park. And I really do feel like uh, Mr. Forever every episode is just um, really, really doing an unbelievable job of. Doing fan service as well as progressing the story, as well as making his own show, yeah. and I, I, I think that I think that it's just really, really, really excellent. I think that's the thing; it's, it, I, I, it stands well on its own. Like my wife did not watch Clone Wars or Rebels, and probably never will, but she's enjoying the crap out of this series. Like she's just loving it every episode. Yeah. She feels like it's better than the last one. So, yeah, I mean, and I like. I mean, I think because they've made. I mean, the show is surprisingly. Even though it, it it's serialized, it is surprisingly episodic mm-hmm. in in content, um, and I think it's it's going to be a treasure trove of fun cameos and uh, lots of stuff for years because they can always have episodes like this. Oh, we've got an Ahsoka episode. Maybe we'll see a Mara Jade episode. Mm-hmm. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff oh, that they goodness. can do. Um, but that's mostly what I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, just it, one, they killed it. one more question that I guess I wanted to pose to you guys, because it's something you mentioned, Alex. You said that, you know, being a little bit wiser and older, Ahsoka knows that she's not the person to train Grogu. Who do you think is? When he goes to Tython and, you know, right. reaches out, who answers the call? Well, I mean, did I have a six hour conversation with my friends about this? Uh, I mean, I did. It, but. <laughs> Uh, what what do I want? I want it to be a new character mm. um, because I always say the same things. My friends are tired of it, which is that um, I want them to write new stuff. Uh, I mean, I just spent five minutes talking about how I like all the cool references to the old stuff. But um, I also really liked I, I, I just really want it to be a new a new person. Yeah. Uh, just I hope it's Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Oh, oh, please, boy. anything but a Skywalker would be. <laughs> I hope it's Luke Skywalker. I'm just. I mean, it just makes sense. It's a Jedi Temple. I mean, I like. Like, I I hate the the new the the sequel trilogy for ruining the fact that Luke was kind. Of, Luke and Leia were like reviving the Jedi Order. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Um. So I mean, I really I don't like the sequel trilogy. I love the characters. I think like I like is it Daisy Ridley, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rip or Ripley. I, I mean, Ridley. Uh, I thought I thought. Ray was a great character. I mean, I'd love to see another trilogy with her as the lead, just not that one, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Again, I, like I just I hate that everything was a take back, um, and that they sort of like retconned all the good stuff that happened at the end of Return of the Jedi, and and all of a sudden we were just back in this situation that was even more desperate and awful than what they faced before, because it was like everything good in the galaxy has been dismantled, and it's just everything's ruined, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I just I I hate that about them. Anyway, um, all right, yeah, Luke, uh, Luke. <laughs> all right, though, I guess that that wraps it. Um, oh, one last prediction, though. Okay, I okay. mean, okay, the Grand Admiral Thrawn reveal is the greatest thing. <laughs> I say Lars Mikkelsen, in, in as the same thing they, as they did when they got Katie Sackhoff to play Rokas on. Yeah. I think Lars Mikkelsen, uh, he voiced he voiced Thrawn in Rebels. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he is an actor, and I think 
if they, you know, like did him upright, he'd have the look too. He's thin, he's gaunt. Um, he's the right age ish. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think he, I think they bring him on board. Nice. I think it's a great prediction. Also, I mean, do the Chiss age? They just look so perfect all the time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you want to send us an email, it's 83infinitycast at gmail.com. That's the number eight, the number three, infinitycast at gmail.com. Uh, you want to subscribe to the podcast version and audio, it's anchor.fm slash number eight, number three, infinity. Uh, you can also uh, leave us a voicemail there and we have links to all the other social media too. Thank you. Night, guys.